Question 1. In an after-school history class, three students take part in a history quiz. The quiz contains two sections, section A and section B. Each section is out of a maximum of five marks. The quiz results of the three students have been recorded in the scattergraph below. What was the median mark in section A? So the median is always the n plus 1 over 2 number when the data points are in ascending order. So in this case, we have three students. So the median is at 3 plus 1 over 2. That's 4 divided by 2. So it's the second number. If we sort these points in ascending order using this axis, the first point is 2, the second point is also 2, the order of those didn't really matter, and the next point is 4. So this is our median mark, 2. Question 2. In an after-school history class, three students take part in a history quiz. The quiz contains two sections, section A and section B. Each section is out of a maximum of five marks. The quiz results of the three students have been recorded in the scatter graph below. What was the range of marks in section B? The range is simply the distance between the lowest point and the highest point. So if we're looking at the section B axis, the lowest point is here, and the highest point is either of these two. So the range, we're looking at the highest point of 4, the lowest point of 3, so the range is this distance here. Simply, that's 4 minus 3, the range is 1. Question 3. Nine classmates start watching a new TV series. They decide amongst themselves that they should rate the first two episodes on a scale of 1 to 10. Their results have been recorded in the scatter graph below. What was the median rating for episode 1? So we know there are nine classmates and the median is always given by the formula n plus 1 over 2. And that tells us which data point to look at. In this case, for nine classmates, that's 9 plus 1 over 2. So we're looking at the fifth data point. So let's count up looking at episode 1 axis. We're going to go in ascending order. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this data point must be the median, which is 5. Question 4. Nine classmates start watching a new TV series. They decide amongst themselves that they should rate the first two episodes on a scale of 1 to 10. Their results have been recorded in the scatter graph below. What was the median rating for episode 2? So we know the median is given by the n plus 1 over second point. In this case, n is 9, so we have 9 plus 1 over 2, that's the fifth point. If we're looking at episode 2, that means we're looking on the y-axis. So we need to count in ascending order the points on the y-axis. That has a value of 2, value of 4, 6, 3 points so far, 4, and then 5. So this fifth point is the median, which had a score of 8. So 8 is the median. Question 5. Nine classmates start watching a new TV series. They decide amongst themselves that they should rate the first two episodes on a scale of 1 to 10. Their results have been recorded in the scatter graph below. What was the difference between the range of ratings in episode 1 and the range of ratings in episode 2? So the range is given by the smallest data point fr taken from the largest data point. So for example, in episode 1, this rate 1 got a rating of 1 and this got a rating of 10. So we're looking for the difference here between these two values. So we want, so I'm going to say range of 1 is 10, take away 1, which is 9. So let's do the same thing, but for episode 2. This data point is still the lowest one, with a, a ranking of 2, and the highest point is this one up here, or that one, they're both the same. So this distance here for episode 2 is 10, take away 2 equals 8. We want the difference in these two ratings, so that's 9 take away 8, which equals 1. Question 6. 
The marks achieved by a Year 11 class in their mock biology and chemistry examinations are displayed in the scatter graph below. Which of the following statements are true? Let's look at statement A first. The student who got 90 in their bio biology exam also got 90 in their chemistry exam. So we look on the biology mark to 90, that's this point, and the chemistry mark for that is 90. So that's true. Let's look at medium next. The medium biology mark is 65. Counting up, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pupils. So the median for this is given by n plus 1 over 2, which is 12 plus 1 over 2, which is 6.5. So the point in a 6.5th place. So we need to count up on the biology axis for this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we've got the 6th and 7th place. 6.5 is halfway between those two. But since these both have the same score, the number halfway in between them will be the same score as well. So that's a score of 60 marks. This was claimed to be 65, so that's clearly false. Now the same thing, but for the chemistry mark. We can use the same position as before because this hasn't changed. We still have 12 students. So we're looking for, for the 6.5th place. So let's count up on the y-axis this time. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's somewhere in between this one and this one. This one has a mark of 65 and this has a mark of 70. So we know that it's got to be halfway in between the 6th and 7th points. So we need to take the average of those two points. 70 plus 65 divided by 2 which is 135 over 2, which is 67.5 marks. And clearly, that's true. So, these two are true, and that one is false. Question 7. The marks achieved by a Year 11 class in their mock biology and chemistry examinations are displayed in the scatter graph below. Which of the following statements are true? So, let's look at A first. The range of biology marks is 60. To calculate the range, we take away the highest value for biology, that's 100, from the lowest value, and for biology, that's 30. So in this case, the range is 70, so that statement was false. Let's look at B. The range of chemistry marks is 55. The highest chemistry mark is this one here, that's a score of 95, and the lowest one was a score of 40. Take this away, that's 55, so that's true. Finally, exactly one student got a mark of 100 in chemistry. Well, from our previous one, we know the highest mark there was 95, so that's clearly false. So, false, true, and false. Question 8. The marks achieved by a Year 11 class in their mock biology and chemistry examinations are displayed in the scatter graph below. Which of the following statements are true? A. 7 twelfths of the students got a mark of 60 or less in biology. Well, 7 twelfths of 12 students is just 7 students. So let's look at how many got a mark of 60 or less. 30, 40, this one got 50... All of these got a mark of 60 or less. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that's what the claim was, so that's true. For B, a third of the 12 students got a mark of 7, of, of above 70 in chemistry. So a third of 12 is the same as a third times 12, which is 4. So let's look at the mark of 70 or above. So, of above 70, in fact. These two have exactly 70, so we're not going to count those. But this one, this one, this one, and this one do have a mark of above 70. So that's true. Finally, we need to look at this one. Three quarters of students got exactly the same mark in both tests. So three quarters of 12 is the same as doing three quarters multiplied by 12. One quarter of 12 is three, 
So 3 quarters of 12 is 9. So next, we need to look at which student's got the same mark in both tests. We can do that by plotting a line here. This point is where students got 40 in biology and 40 in chemistry. This point here is where students got 50 and 50. So if we consider this line, all points that are on the line got an equal mark in both tests. And we see that's one, two, three points. So we only have three students that got an equal mark on both tests. The claim was nine, so that's clearly false. So we have true, true, and false. Question nine. 16 people in a focus group were asked to rank two newly developed products on a scale from 1 to 10. Their results have been recorded in the scatter graph below. Which of the following statements are true? A. The median rating for product A is 6. So we calculate median by taking the m plus 1 over second number. In this case we have 16 people. So 16 plus 1 over 2, that's 17 divided by 2. So we're looking for the 8.5 number. Okay, so let's look at product A and we're going to count up the marks in ascending order. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They all have 1, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is our 8th and 9th numbers. 8.5 should be halfway between those, but these both have a rating of 5. Normally we take the average of the two numbers, but obviously the average of 5 and 5 is just 5. The claim was that it was 6, so that is false. Next, the median rating for product B is 5. We're still looking for the 8.5th place in the same way, but we're going to look on the y-axis this time. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And as before, the 8th place is 5. The ninth place is also 5. The average of those two numbers has to be 5 for the 8.5th place. The claim was that it was 5, so that's true. Finally, three people gave product A a rating of 3. Well, here's product A, and there's a rating of 3. We're looking at this line here, because all people on this line gave a rating of 3. And we only have two points that gave a rating of 3, so that is false. Our final answer, false, true, and false. Question 10. 16 people in a focus group were asked to rate two newly developed products on a scale from 1 to 10. Their results have been recorded in the scatter graph below. Which of the following statements are true? A. 50% of people gave product A a rating of 5 or less. So. 50% of 16 is 0 0.5 times 16, which is 8. We want to look for the people who gave product A a rating of 5 or less. That's people below this line that gave them a rating of 5. So 1, 2, because it's 5 or less, these ones can be counted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we actually have nine of them that gave a rating of five or less, so that's false. A quarter of people gave product A a rating greater than five and gave product B a rating of five or above. So a quarter of 16 is a quarter times 16, which is four. So this line already shows us those that gave product A a rating of greater than five. That's the ones to the right of this, not including the two on the line. And we want something similar for product B, so it's this line here. So, people that gave a rating greater than 5 are over this side, and a rating of 5 for product B up here, so we're looking at this region of the graph. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and this one is not counted, because we need greater than 5 for product B. So that one will be greater than or equal to. So we have 4 which is as expected, so that's true. Finally, 12.5% of people gave product A and product B exactly the same rating. So we want 12.5% of 16, that's 0.125 times 16, which is two. 
And if you want exactly the same rating, it's useful to plot in the line that goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and so on. And we have one, two points that are on that line. They both gave exactly the same rating, 1 and 1, and 9 and 9. So we have two, as expected. So that statement is true. Finally, we have false, true, untrue.